No, sisters, prepare yourself any way you like for your husband and spend your time to do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you for that. If the Prophet said, don't pluck the eyebrows, don't pluck the eyebrows. And don't try to try to find a way around that because you want to pluck your eyebrows. Don't do it. What obligation do we have towards those sisters who do not cover in an Islamic way? Uh, let their brothers and let their fathers and let their guardians or the Imam advise them or let other sisters advise them and don't speak bad about them. And the sisters who see sisters who are not dressed properly, find a nice way. Maybe you invite that sister to your home. Don't talk about her clothes. Don't say to her in the masjid, oh, sister, why are you dressed like that? You know, you know, so and so, but sister, why you don't come to my house? I got some clothes for you. It's not the way. Don't say anything to her. Be nice to her. Don't even mention an issue to her. Invite her to your house. Invite that sister to your house. And in your house, show her films of other sisters. Invite her with other sisters. She will see how they're dressing. She will see how you're dressing. And then you might say to her, Sister, do you need an overgarment? Sister, do you need the khimar? Sister, do you need this? Sister, do you need that? And you advise her. If she begins to like you, what will she do? She will begin to modify herself sometime from the advice. So be patient with those sisters because they are Muslim sisters. Don't run them away. Because if you run them away, where will they be? They will be with the kuffar. So don't do that, inshallah. Be patient. Somebody said, is it true that if a husband wants to take a second wife, he doesn't have to inform his first wife? If this is true, isn't this a form of deception? No, this is not a form of deception. I said, and I, I, I just reiterate myself again, it is good, mustahaba, recommended for the man to discuss this matter. Not only the issue of a second wife, but how he spends his money, how he spends his time. What his major decision is going to be. He wants to go, uh, uh, he wants to travel to Hajj. He wants to go to a class. He, anything he should do, he should make istikhara. He should talk to his wife about it. But doesn't mean that it's wajib on him. Doesn't mean it's farad on him. Doesn't mean he has to. And sister, if you make yourself open-minded towards what Allah and His Messenger وسلم, said, the chances are your husband will discuss everything with you. But sister, as I mentioned, if you are talking very bad and cursing and threatening and, uh, and rebelling, do you, think, do you think that your husband will, will, uh, will announce to you what he will do so you can set a trap for him? No. So sister, think about this. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have also husna dhan. Think the best thing. Don't think the worst thing. Don't preoccupy yourself about what you think your husband will do. This is his right. This is his decision. You take care of your rights and you take care of your decision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the best insha'Allah. If a woman marries a non-Muslim, if a Muslim man marries a non-Muslim woman, is he responsible if she does not wear hijab? First of all, the Muslim should not marry a non-Muslim woman. That's number one. That's number one. Let's make this issue clear. Where Allah gave us the permission to marry women of, of the Ahl al-Kitab and to eat their food, there are conditions of that. And let me tell the brothers what the condition is. That that non-Muslim woman should be a woman who herself was never penetrated and she never engaged in any paramours ever. And she cannot be a mushrikat. Three things. She was not penetrated before, so that means that she's virgin. That's number one. Secondly, she never engaged in any paramours with any man. So that means what? She's completely innocent, pure. And thirdly, she's not mushrikat. Mushrikat means what? She's not associating any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, how, where, 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 how many non-Muslim women you will find fit that category? So the Muslim men should know first that if they marry a non-Muslim woman, she has to fit up some conditions. The other thing is, brothers, be careful. If you marry a non-Muslim woman in the non-Muslim country, she has priority over your children. 
And if something happens to that marriage, 90% the chance is what? What do you think? The children will go with her. So if she's, if she's a Christian and she's a non-Muslim and you're a Muslim, so on Sunday she wants to go to church. So she will take the children to the church. On Friday you go to, you want to take them to Jum'ah. She say, no, I don't think you should take them to Jum'ah because I'm taking them to the church. So what will happen now? See, now you're in a trap. You should have thought about that before you dived into that situation. You was looking at her. You was thinking about her. But you wasn't thinking about the children. You wasn't thinking about the complications. So don't put yourself in that situation. Seven out of ten of the marriages where the man marries the non-Muslim, he will lose the children. The children will wind up becoming kafirs. This is the record. So we don't recommend for the man to marry non-Muslim women. That's number one. But if they do, this is their right to dive into that trap. But I'm telling you, brothers, when you jump into it, it is a trap. Now, if you marry a non-Muslim woman, but she's not going to church, she don't associate no partners with the law, she is a clean woman, she is listening to you, there's, and you believe there's a good chance for her to become a Muslim, huh? then it's halal for you to do it. But my advice, if you think maybe she should become a Muslim, huh? you should wait a little while and see if she will. Because if she becomes a Muslim, huh? most of your problems have been solved. But if she's not, she's a kafir, and she has her support of her kafir family, brother, you are in for some problems. You are in for some problems. Tie your seatbelt on. That's all I can tell you. Sheikh, you said a co-wife may be beneficial. Should the woman then choose or help choose a second wife? This is wonderful. This is absolutely wonderful. If a sister, if a sister can say to her husband, brother, look, Habibi, I don't want you to marry again. I, w I don't really like it. But if I think you will, or you think you must, or because of the condition of other sisters, please let me help you. Let me make sure that it's a sister that I can get along with. I know what you like, and I know what you dislike. Let me please help you. So before you select somebody, please, let me help you, please. If a brother has a sister like that, he's really foolish if he does not allow the sister to help him in this manner. May Allah bless the sister, inshallah, who thinks that way. Hmm? It's okay. Okay, uh, this is a... Um, the sister says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, First of all, brothers, please, uh, let me give patience, please. First of all, this ayah, First of all, this ayah has been subject to nasakh. This ayah is mansukh. The companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi complained that this verse was too strict. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that they are not to be like the Jews and to say we heard and we, we hear and we obey. Two verses later, Allah abrogated that verse, Jazakallah Khairan, Alhamdulillah, with something far lighter. So this means that the previous verse was to test their faith and once they passed the test, it was removed. Could the verses of multiple marriage also be a test like that to women? That is, even though it may never happen to them, they are still to be tested to see the level of obedience they have. MashaAllah. This is good. Alhamdulillah. If they want to take it as a test, they can take it as a test. But the bottom line, it is a hukum. It is not just a test. It is a hukum. Allah has made hukum that the men can marry two, three, or four. And in certain cases, it becomes wajib on the men to do so. Mustahaba in some cases and wajib in other cases. So it is not just an issue of testing the women. It is a test. But it is also a hukum from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is from the ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that men have this right.